The most common form of owner preventative maintenance is the oil change. You may be able to change the oil on your aircraft with the cowl on, but we've removed it to see things better. Now this aircraft has an oil filter mounted to the rear of the engine. Note that the filter is safety wired to the engine block. If your airplane has an oil screen instead of a filter, it's still an easy operation. Just have your mechanic show you the specific procedure for your aircraft. Aircraft with oil filters should have the oil changed at least every 50 hours. If your plane has an oil screen, the oil should be changed every 25 hours. Now in addition to the number of hours on the oil, time matters. Regardless of the number of hours on the oil, it needs to be changed at least every four months. Before we start, we gather our supplies. Oil, new oil filter, drain hose, oil bucket, oil analysis kit, wrenches for the oil filter, and rags to clean up any spills. This is also a great time to talk about oil. The most common types of oil are straight weight and multi-weight. A straight weight oil, such as Aeroshell W100, is a single viscosity. This is actually a straight SAE 50 weight oil with the addition of additives such as ashless dispersant cleansers, lead scavenging agents, and acid neutralizers. Another straight weight oil is mineral oil. Mineral oil has no chemical additives and is typically used in engine and cylinder braking to assist with the seating of rings. Straight weight oils perform extremely well in relatively stable, warm temperatures. Finally, there's multi-weight oil. The most common types of multi-weight oil are Aeroshell 15W50, Philips 20W50, and Exxon Elite 20W50. These oils perform better than straight weight oils over a wide temperature range. The numbers in the name of the oil indicate the range of straight weight oils that the multi-grade covers. For example, 20W50 oil has the viscosity of a 20 weight oil in low temperatures for faster lubrication on cold starts and the viscosity of a 50 weight oil in high temperatures to protect the engine after it's fully warmed up. It should be pointed out that some multi-weight oils are at least partially synthetic. This is what the term semi-synthetic means. Part of the contents are man-made synthetic lubricants and the other part is a natural petroleum from crude oil. Now the first step in the oil change is to warm up the oil. It's a good idea to fly the airplane to bring the oil up to temperature just before draining it. Once we're back on the ground, we begin by attaching a clean hose to the quick drain valve at the bottom of the engine and positioning a bucket to collect the oil. Before we start draining, we get our oil sampling container ready. We need a clean sample, so we've cleaned the hose and we let the oil run from the drain for a few seconds before filling the sample container. We only need about half of a container full for an accurate sample. Oil analysis is a very important part of monitoring your engine's health. At every oil change, you should take an oil sample and send it in for analysis. The oil analysis shop will send you back a record of the current results as well as previous tests. What we're really looking for are trends. Every engine produces slightly different levels of chrome, aluminum, iron, and other metals. While the levels need to stay in the safe range, it's the trends that tell us about how the engine is really doing. If we see a notable increase in any of the metals, we know that we need to look further into what might be happening inside the engine. This can help us identify a problem before it gets serious. Now that the oil has been drained, we close the drain valve and remove the hose. Be sure to check that the valve is securely closed. Next, we check the finger screen. We begin by removing the safety wire, then we loosen and remove the plug and screen. The screen can then be inspected for contamination and metal. If no problems are found, then we put a new gasket on, retorque the plug, and safety wire it per the manufacturer's instructions. Now it's time to remove and replace the filter. We begin by removing the safety wire. Next, we slightly loosen the filter with a socket wrench and position a container to catch excess oil from the filter as we remove it. In this case, we've cut an orange juice jug to fit underneath the filter. Then we can simply loosen and unscrew the filter. Once the filter's off, we let the engine drain off any residual oil 
while we inspect the old filter and prepare the new one. You should always cut open your old filter to inspect it for metal. We're using this filter cutter for the job. Once the outer shell is removed, we use a hacksaw or knife to cut each end of the filter element and remove it from the core. Once the filter element is free, it can be spread out and inspected for metal flakes and other debris. If you find any metal flakes, have your mechanic inspect it before any further flight. The new filter has a rubber gasket on the base. We need to lubricate it prior to installation. Our manual recommends using Dow DC4 as a lubricant, but it also says that engine oil can be substituted if necessary. We write the engine information, date, and engine time on the filter, pre-fill it with some oil, and hand tighten it back on the engine. We then torque the filter using the torque values recommended by the manufacturer. Now it's time to safety wire the oil filter. Safety wiring is one of the most important skills an owner can have, and it's used throughout the aircraft to prevent critical parts from loosening or moving. If you know how to safety wire, you'll know how to inspect it, and you can identify other potentially dangerous problems. We're going to cover some of the basics of safety wiring, but unless you've already been trained, have your mechanic give you a hands-on lesson to make sure that you do it properly, and always have your mechanic inspect your work. There are really two ways to safety wire, by hand and with a pair of safety wire pliers. For this oil filter, we're using .041 safety wire. Let's begin by demonstrating the hand method. We begin by cutting a length of wire a few inches greater than double the distance between the safety wire holes. After threading the wire through the lug on the engine, we fold it back on itself. We then begin twisting the wire clockwise so that we have about six to eight twists per inch. Safety wire pliers make the twisting job easier. Simply clamp the two ends to be twisted and pull on the end of the pliers. Repeat this until there are about six to eight twists per inch in the wire. When we've reached the other safety hole, we feed one of the free leads through, pull both leads tight, and continue twisting in the opposite direction for about an inch. Finally, we snip off all but the last three quarter inch or so and use a pair of needle nose pliers to bend the excess twisted wire over on itself. This prevents people from getting snagged or cut by the free end of the wire in the future. Now when you're done, the safety wire must be tight, and most importantly, it must be installed in a way that will prevent loosening of the wired component. This means that you need to examine the parts and use a wiring path that will tend to pull the parts tighter, rather than allowing them to loosen at all. In this case, the oil filter tightens in a clockwise twist. So, we've positioned the safety wire with light tension pulling the filter clockwise. Refer to your mechanic and your AC4313 for more information on proper safety wire procedures. Finally, we refill the engine with oil and we're ready for a test run. It's important to test run the engine and inspect it for leaks before taking it back into the air.